are beyond the ruling and credit of all things. El Elyon, the most high. I want to say total above for all that you have done for us. Total above for your mercy, your love. Total above for your Torah, Abia. I'll be asking be asking this this now, that you can forgive us for our sins, transgressions, and our iniquities. Forgive us for the many times when we missed the mark. Forgive me, Abia. Abia, we know that your word says that you will not hear the, hear the prayers of sinners. So I ask that you can cleanse us from our unrighteousness cleanse us from our filthiness, so that when we do send up tough foot to you, you can hear our prayers. I'll be asking you to strengthen the brothers on this call, the hockey on this call, and the ones that are not on this call. And I ask that you can strengthen the men, I'll be asking, across the four corners of the earth. And I ask that you give us the wisdom to uphold our responsibility and even to take on more responsibility. And I'll be asked that we would not appear weak before the people on this earth and blaspheme your name, but ask that we can be strong, men in you, Abia, Is Elohim, righteous men, men of truth, men of valor, men of honor, men that are willing to do the right thing, regardless of how hard it may seem. And Abia, ask that you can bless us off the wisdom, hope, my Abia, teach us what is right and what is wrong, what is clean and what is unclean. And Abia, I ask that regardless of the things that are happening on in the world, or whatever is happening within the government, or within this system, I'll be asked, ask that we will not be distracted, but ask that we will keep our minds stayed on you. And I'll be also asked that we will not be distracted by the things that are going with our own, within our own minds, within our lab, I'll be asked. Teach us how to be focused, I'll be asked, how to be circumspect. And I ask that you can forgive us for the many times where we, where we did not give our full attention to you. But I'll be asked that you teach us how to be stronger, teach us how to fight our spiritual battles. And I'll be asked that you remember that we are flesh, remember that we are dust. And I'll be also asked that you remember that we are returning to the past of old, but we are seeking information that was once lost. So I'll be asked that you teach us how to be righteous, each Elohim, men of you, I'll be asked, men of God. And I ask that you deliver us from anything that we need deliverance from. And I ask that you walk with us to the end as we seek, we seek eternal life. Bless you, Lord Yahweh. Blesses your name, Yahweh, and bless he that comes in the name of Yahweh. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah, Amen, Amen. Salah. Yeah, Amen. Toda Rabbah. Toda Rabbah for that, Aki. All right, all right. Shalom, shalom. My to all my Akim up here. Um, so I want to have a discussion tonight with the brethren um, just about being I like uh, what my brother said about being, teaching us how to be uh, Ish Elohim, men of Elohim, righteous men. Um, that's one of the main purposes of this particular study is that, you know, we as men can learn how to be, you know, more righteous, <laughs> more righteous, uh, um, upright, you know, men of standard. So, um, you know, I know we all just coming off the, uh, the, 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 the feast, Sukkot, last great day um you know how do we feel do we feel like we uh, 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 uh we still got that energy how we feel we feel you know brother you know just to kind of feel y'all out tonight how, how, how we doing after the feast did we better worse did we you know find out a lot of things about ourselves that you know how was it coming together unifying you know what i'm saying and and and, and, and you know the things that happened, I know everybody wasn't at Sukkot, you know, that we did in Carolina, but, you know, just how you feel. Go ahead, Adon. Uh, sorry. I, I feel like it was a reflective Sukkot. Um, I'm looking forward to a lot of the changes that we spoke about, but also a lot of the changes that, you know, eternally within our homes and within ourselves. I, I know Morris Mark brought up, um, take this time out to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Most High and allow him to really guide you and where it is that he's trying to take you. And I've been really just pondering on that, on the steps I need to take. So next Sukkot, uh, I'm more, I can see a change from this one, a growth in a sense. Um, and I'm just preparing to just walk in that direction. Okay, okay, okay. Sha? Um, you know, how do I feel now? Um, well, so to be honest, after Suko, you know, I was real tired. Um, and I was playing catch up. 
uh, with a lot of things, work, school, um, did a, you know, um, but you know, after that, uh, well, before I left Suko, one thing I thought about, you know, the scriptures that I know it's in uh, the Torah, it's also in, um, I believe, uh, First Peter chapter two, verse nine, where it talks about, you know, kingdom of priests, a set apart nation. And I heard that, that precept before, you know, multiple times, especially when I first came into the group. But when I heard it at Suko, um, it's like I understand more of it, even though I, you know, I heard that precept before. One thing I thought about, you know, I have a lot more responsibility now. Um, you know, I'm supposed to be a priest, you know, um, I have to get more grounded in the Hebrew language, the Hebrew, and also the scriptures, you know, people, I'm supposed to be the person that people go to to ask questions, you know, um, when they, you know, what did uh, King David say? What did he mean when he said this? Or how do you say this in Hebrew? I'm supposed to be the person that knows that. Well, how did I become saved, you know? And then, you know, once I got home, like I said, I was tired, but one thing I, I had a drive to, you know, you know, bring more people together. You know, what can I do to help bring people together so we can have what we had at Suko, not just only at a feast, but what could I do, you know, to help bring people together where we can have that, not just on feast, but, you know, maybe twice a week or even all throughout. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had a lot more determination, you know, and I would say, I feel that there's a lot more weight, you know, on, I would say, you know, on my end, you know, what can I do to help, you know, what am I not doing? But um, I yield, I'll praise him most time. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shalom. <coughs> Excuse me. Shalom, shalom, Kim Malatov. It's great shalom. to be on. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> what uh, what I'll say for myself is, after coming through the coat, after going through the immersion process, and just coming back into normal life or whatever you want to call it, um, the tech have been instant and vigorous. But what I would is tell that yeah to the most high. Toda just for keeping me in the mindset on him. Yeah. Um, I just, I do just want to say, uh, yeah. And something I've been hearing over and over again in little studies I've done this week since I've been back is, you know, learning how to show love through adversity and pain. And I just want to thank the creator for that. So, Toda, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Blessings, blessings. Uh, Saw your hand. Shalom, shalom, Akeem. Shalom. So, man, um, so at the Suco, um, I went to work, back to work on that Friday. And I don't, I was depopulated, de de like, my spirit was not just to be in there, like, like something. I left my idea, had to tell my each I need to bring my idea to log in the computer. I just was was not there, you know. My mind was still on Suko, you know. Um, the one is the unity, man. So it this this Suko, man, this helped me to continue doing the mission. You know, we have a mission. And that mission is us building that community with each other and um, that unity and try to continue on that oneness and coming together, man. And the first thing on my mind, I know people say, man, we just came out of a bunch of study. It was getting the men started back up and running, you know, so we could continue building that men of Elohim and continue, we continue building from there, from Suco. Um, it, it was, told to see you Adon and to see how you and Mori Dawu and Mori Shemak, how y'all three, you know, was correlating and interacting and putting these lessons together and and being on one accord, man. And that's like being leaders is what we need in this nation is showing us, man. Especially when we had a lot of new people with that with their first Suko and they're still talking about it to the day. One thing I seen this year from last year that no one no. caught COVID. 
I would, I got, I was one that got sick. My household, um, it's a few of us. A lot of them, half of us caught COVID after the last two COVID. I don't know what was going on. It was some things that happened last two COVID. We're not gonna discuss that here, but we didn't have none of that issue we had last year, this year, and the most side, you know, he showed us favor. So uh, it's continue building. Um, you know, I'm gonna continue yeah. doing the mission, bringing that unity into it. Continue trying to get this uh, place of refuge up and running for us, and uh, keep reaching out to my mores and my, uh, my 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 captains, them how to get these lessons done and not yield. Right. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Uh, who? Uh, somebody just came in. Did you see all boxes on your uh, block? That's more right handed, y'all. Okay, okay. I was just, I was wondering. I was like, <laughs> uh, you said, I think, I, I, I think he, be, I know he tried to put the Hebrew letters, but that's how I show up on it when he logs in. Oh, I know who that is. I, I know who that is. <laughs> shalom, my brother. Shalom, Warren. How you doing, my brother? Shalom, shalom, my Kim. How's everyone right. doing? Ah, told me I'm good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be seen. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's good to be seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I was I'm glad I was able to tap in for a little while. I was like, oh, I, I'm in time for the meeting. Hold on. Let me try to tap in. Boop, let me okay. see. Go brother, you always, look, you always tap in, even when you're not, brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. I love y'all for right. sure. Yeah, you know, you Good to hear your voice and see your face. I know you're gonna be chiming in tonight. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> amen, amen. Uh, Maury, I'm okay. Uh, so so I'm again. Uh, don't to the to brothers. Really, um, coming back to to Suko, uh, I'm I'm really tired of the lessons. I I I know that's uh, that sounds weird, but. The Most High gave us um, an edict when we were out there. And if you didn't hear it, I don't think you were listening. And so for, for me now, it's, it's, it's really about just doing what we got to do to, to make this last Sukkot, the last one that you don't have an option. That's the last Sukkot without an option. So... That's what my mind has been. And uh, with everything that's going on, I mean, of course, you know, the uh, the politics and some would call it uh, a distraction. I don't necessarily call it a distraction. I call it um, uh, being called to the stage. And once again, it's, it's something that's an edict. The Most High is setting the stage and really calling us to the stage to stand in front and be who we're supposed to be, right? It says the earth moans and groans for the uh, manifestation of the, the sons of Elohim, especially for the men. So uh, I ain't gonna say too too much more, right? but it, I'm just tired of the lessons. I, I, let's just, you know, let's uh, just do it. Shalom. Okay, I mean, I heard a lot of good things come out. You know, I heard people that was, you know, motivated and felt unified. Um, a lot of words that were going out was they felt safe, um, you know, like I said, ready to actually do something, ready to stop talking, ready to put my money, our time, our resources, where our mouth is at, you know, and this all goes on, uh, falls under the command of to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, you know, may all your totality or your resource, you know, so. Um, and that's what I'm, one thing I'm going to talk about tonight. But this one thing where everybody's part was that I was drained after, and not in a bad way. I was just drained because it's like, okay, you know, it's a fight between lives, you know, lifestyles. Let me use that term. Suko is like a fight between lifestyles. It's a lifestyle you have that you deal with the world, you're in and out of it, you interact in it. It's fast paced, usually it's consistent, it's nine to five or whatever. That's, and then you have another lifestyle that's cultural, it's edifying, you know what I'm saying? 
the, it's a different pressure. It's pressure, but it's a different kind of pressure. It's not the pressure of, you know, um, you know, you, you know that pressure that, that you get in the world. It's not that kind of pressure. It's a different kind of pressure, though. It's more of a pressure like, I don't, I don't, I can't fill my Elohim, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, we don't see Elohim in physical outside of each other. So we, we are each other's physical manifestation in the most high. So, you know, it's like, I can't fail my brother, I can't fail my sister, I gotta make sure I'm doing it, make sure I'm doing my watches, whatever it may be. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Go ahead, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Lucy. Okay, shalom, shalom. Can you hear me pretty well, though? Fine. Okay, all praise in the most high. Yeah, uh, sleek out for my tardiness. I chimed in a little bit late, but I'm listening to all the Akeem. So I got the question. So uh, I'll say this in regards to uh, my experience. I'm pretty sure that was the question. Uh, it was transforming for me, which is interesting because I was talking to my Abba and uh, we did our uh, some codes at different times, but the, the, the feeling was mutual. The feeling was the same. So I think we're in that season of transforming the mind. And that was kind of one of the things that we've seen uh, a lot of uh, barriers being broken down. A lot of things are being removed in order for us to move forward. So it's a beautiful thing to see, but <laughs> I'm kind of in the same vein as my act too. Uh, Dao, I'm, I'm kind of done with the lessons. Uh, we've been laboring for a minute. Uh, it gets tiresome kind of going through the same thing over and over again, repeating the same cycle, which is still interesting because uh, at the beginning of this uh, year, uh, Maak brought out an actually very interesting lesson, which this is how the Most High works. You really see the Most High being magnified in all our thing, all everything that we do. Um, the lesson was talking about not repeating the same thing year by year and being stagnant. And to see this Sukkot, it was completely different from all the other Sukkots that we've performed. And I would say that that's the first step moving forward. The first step is always the hardest step. We all know that. So in seeing the things that we're seeing, especially with everything going on in the world right now, transpiring around us, it's, it's, it's hard but it's necessary to take these first steps. And I think unshackling ourselves, literally unshackling ourselves is that first step. Again, being the hardest thing to do. Um, I, <laughs> I didn't wanna leave, uh, that's, that's me personally, I didn't wanna leave, but I definitely understand what you mean as far as like, you know, battling with, your, with, <laughs> with those two mindsets. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an overstatement, I, I, I overstate that, so. Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, and then you come back to the world where shootings are going on, people are attacking one of the brothers, you know what I'm saying? For statements that he said that everybody in the world knows true, you know, things of that nature, you know. Um, so here we are. Here we are once again, a man study, back to the routine, back to the format. Um What's the goal? What, why, why are we having these studies? Why are we on here? Since uh, Brother said, I'm tired of less. Why are we on here? Why do we come on here every uh, uh, Shalishi at 8.30? Why do we come in on, on here? Does anybody know? Or think they know or have a you know, thought on it? Uh, go ahead, Shia and Shah. Um, yes, I remember I started. This is actually, is there an echo? Okay, go ahead. So when I uh, I first came to it, I was in the truth. Oh, so, sleek out. One thing, what we will do though, it, everybody to have their hand, if an elder wants to speak, we will give the floor to one of the elders or either a more, just to put that out there uh, for anybody. But go ahead, Shai. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I remember when I uh, when I first came to the truth, in 2020, um, the year 2020. And I was in the truth about myself for about, you know, just for about, um, what to say, four months. You know, then I, that's when I met more of the he shot in Walmart. And then I started getting on in the men's study. And the men's studies, that's how I met, you know, the brothers and, you know, later on the sisters when I started going to the Shabbat, 
you know, the Shabbat services on Zoom. So, you know, that's how I kind of met everyone. And then later on, I met everyone at Pesach. And then I remember, I think it was more smart. He said the purpose of the men's day was to build the brotherhood. You know, and I could say if it wasn't had had not been for the men's studies, um, you know, I would have met, you know, I would have met a lot of the brothers, you know, especially the brothers in North Carolina, because you know, some of them were five hours away. So, you know, I do see the benefit of it. That's what I see. So it's built the brotherhood is also, you know, I see the benefit of bringing out the word. There's a lot of things I learned for the men's studies. And a lot of times when I, you know, I'm going through situations in my life, I revert back to what a brother said during the lesson or what that moray or that person was saying during the lesson. Or I remember what so-and-so said, and I kind of use that as motivation or to help me in my daily life. Um, but also, you know, I kind of see what, you know, um, I believe it was more the wood and sorry, Yosef are coming from what are tired of the lessons because this is an unrelated topic, but I was telling someone how sometimes I feel guilty saying things because I, I don't feel like I'm putting that much effort into it. So I told them that um, I'm just going to stop saying certain things. If I stop saying certain things to you or how I feel about you, it doesn't mean I don't mean it, but it just means that I want to put more work in so you can see how I feel about you through my works. Um, so I told you, I kind of feel embarrassed when I, you don't see my, when, I, when my works aren't matching with what I'm saying. Um, but I, I yield. All right, okay. And I would say keep talking, but just talk in truth. You understand? Keep speaking, but speak in truth. So if your desire is to do something, speak it until it comes to pass. If you're speaking it in truth. So what happens is the talking, the actions is what separates the, the, the talkers from the walkers. It's okay to talk as long as your heart is to do those things. So that way, when the opportunity presents itself, then you will start the walk or you'll be hands in, you'll be all in. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, Ashalomo. Then Azaria who? Hey, uh, didn't start your hand and has his hand, oh, excuse me, have his hand up. Who was that? Sorry, your hand. Yeah, I think he put his hand down. Yeah, I, that, that was put down by mistake. I didn't realize I had it down, but I uh, told her, I told her, I don't know. Um, the, the purpose of this, this, this I see this men's, these men started coming together is building up the men, the men of Elohim. It's the learning each other, building that unity from us men, knowing each other. Because in the end of the day, it starts from the, it starts from us. We are the leaders of our, for one, our household, for our women, you know. So we, us building together learning each other, learning how to look for each other, learning how to lean on each other. Um, as men, sometimes we carry the yoke on our neck, on our back, right? We carry a lot of stuff and we like, man, this, this is my job as a man here. And sometimes we men, we don't show our emotion and feel like we can't lean on other men when we going through stuff. So this this these men study, it's not just for the lesson like more like more that will say you know the lesson, but it's about building, and we need to continue building, man. Cause we we stronger together than divided, and that's how I look at it. And I yield. All right. That's what I mean. Shalomo. Kane, Kane. Um, what I'm going to say is really in track or in line with what everyone else is saying, but I'll say it in short. Fellowship and discipleship. I believe that's why we're here. Uh, I yield. All right, fellowship and discipleship. Go ahead, that's okay. Uh, um, Henry, uh, and then I got you, uh, Akazari. So I just wanted to add to what each one is saying, just as from a different perspective. It's not only that this is the fellowship is what's needed for each one of us as men, as Maury Dawu said, because we don't express ourselves in that way. We don't really express ourselves to each other about what we need to help one another be stronger as men. You feel what I'm saying? But we get 
men when we fellowship with other men that are leaders or that are in the same way. So that that strength, we may not say, I need you, brother. I needed to hear, or I need you. Like, it's not going to be a need, but it's a need, you know? So just the other perspective I'm saying is, an, is the men's studies are necessity uh, for it needed, you know? Um, like like food it's needed uh, you understand it's needed when i'm I, i'm the furthest and i didn't get to be there with you all we were on different times and everything and i still was trying to get there but still i was there because mm -hmm. you all were there mm -hmm. understand and so when i see the lessons when i see the 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 the, the text or if i I get the lesson from the men's study and I hear what was said and what was said. It, it, it gives me the, the extra what I need to, while I'm out here in these other, in this world, trying to lead from a position amongst people who don't move like I move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? I'm in the world. I'm out here, but I got to, whatever I have to do, I still have to lead. You understand? Yeah. But I'm yeah. leading. I'm leading other men that are learning their way, but men that are faithful in one sense, but have no maybe have no clue on how we're how we are. You understand? And what that necessary is, but it's needed. You know what I'm saying? It's needed. I wouldn't care if it's two or three, it's needed. So that's what I wanted to add. Not just that it it we you know. It's more than just a study. It's more than just encouragement. It's actually needed, like food. All right. All right. Hold on. Uh, Maury Smart, did you want to go? Yes, if I could real quick. Um, I just want to uh, lamb chop pretty much where uh, uh, Maury Haney, I was just coming from. Um, these men's studies are, are much needed. And so this is a Paul moment. So I'm in agreement with everything that's already being said. But uh, this men's study is the action. This men's study is the action. Um, because a lot of times certain lessons are just lessons and it's just taught, right? Just a lesson, which we can say we're tired of. But this men's study is more than a lesson, it's the action. Um, right. And one of the reasons why we started it for the action is because before we can do anything as a community for its unity, you have to build a love and a respect for one another. You have to know, you have to build a certain level of trust. You have to build character you know so when we own these studies we get to learn each other we get to know who's who um at some point as we get to learn who's who and the more time we spend together in these studies we go through the lessons the way we respond to certain lessons also lets us know where we actually are how our cod we are or how different we are or mm -hmm. where our pride may be or where our humility may be where mm -hmm. my vow may be where my vow may not be what my, my dedications may be so we're learning these things. And if we don't have the action of the lessons of this men's study of this group for men to learn how to have an outlet, like Maury Haney, I was saying, um, to have an outlet. And I heard, I think it was uh, Shah Shamar or Shalomo, or somebody made it like men don't have a place to express themselves. That, no, sorry, Hanan, about men being the leaders. We have to have a platform to express ourselves and the way we help one another, the way we hear each other's heart and and either build up or ignore one another, it tells us what we have, you know what I'm saying? To now produce another action. So the lessons are, are a lot of times are just being in class, but this study is, uh, is a different type of lesson. It's an action, uh, it's, a, it's a bring forth action lesson because the thing that I've seen in my 25 years of being in this truth now, I've tried to do a lot of action and I've tried to do a lot of unity and it always fails. But one thing that I've noticed um, from my time of, of being in this is it always fails when differences come up because all people want to do is focus on the differences. And most of the time when people are focusing on the differences, it's people I don't even know. Like we've been on meets with over 50 mores before trying to talk about doing things. But yep. the first time I ever talked to them mores was that night when it could be me and Baruch said, hey man, we need to get some mores again. We need to try to do this. Me, Baruch and Hanny, y'all, we all know each other. So we all think alike. We all ready to do something. But we're like, hey, let's get everybody involved. And we get 45 other mores on with us and we don't really know them. And then it crashes because the love is there between me and Hanny, y'all. The love is there between me and Baruch. 
but we don't know these other brothers. So now it's just, oh, they on the fence. And anything we say, they're defending against. Anything they say, we're defending against. But when it's your brothers mm -hmm. and you put together a study and, and this action that we've been doing for quite some time now, you get to learn your brothers. And so now if a don't root disagree with me, I'm not taking it offensively. I'm like, okay, I need to hear what a don't talking about. Or oh, why isn't he agreeing with me? You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because we, we process that different because we have that bond. We have a brotherhood. So we're actually now bringing forth the action of being an arc, that strong wall that more group teaches mm -hmm. about. We're learning to be a strong wall for each other. We know how to protect one another. We know how to unify now. We know who's weak in certain areas, who's strong in other areas, and how to defend and encourage one another. So, um, and so now going back to the other thought that I heard, I came in a little late, sleek out, but I heard uh, 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 Adon yourself speaking. And I too, I'm, I'm tired of just the lessons. You know, that's <laughs> I'm tired of just the lesson when we go to just from that point of view. And we do need to be producing the action, but this is ground one to action that's being produced. And now we have to go into phase two of this actual action. And I'll talk about that at a, at a theater near you. I yield back to you. Uh, uh, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. All, all truth, brother. All truth. I'll, I'll come in a minute. I don't desire you. Go ahead, my brother. Came. Um, I'm in agreement with everyone. Um, where this is for growth and development um, and accountability. S sometimes it's hard to be accountable of yourself when it's just you and, and, and you're alone and you're in your location. So being able to be on these calls to see where everyone else's mind is at, seeing that the things that the Most High has been telling you is also has been shared to the brothers because you can hear it in the confirmation. It, it constantly keeps you accountable in your growth. That way we can all walk with y'all together and accordingly to the way that it needs to be done. So I, I think it is important because this is an action that is being done. As I remember when we first came in, we didn't have this. We didn't have a, a weekly men's study where we can gather as men and talk, open up, and, and, and really be vulnerable and be able to communicate how we feel about certain things. So I do think that this is a great start for us to be able to build the nation that we are supposed to be building, being that each Elohim that we're working and striving towards. Hey, hallelujah. I love it. Um, all true, you know. Um, everything everybody's saying it's got their points and this is one of the main reasons why we come together because y'all need to know me right if I'm one of the people that sit up and teach y'all teach your wives your children sometimes and things of that nature right don't you need to know who you're talking to don't you need to know who's talking to your children or your wives or yourself you know, and not just all the good points of me, but know my character, know when I'm serious, when I'm playing, you know what I'm saying? When I'm trying to understand, because this is how we build together. There are many times that more uh more and some mop, for instance, we work closely together. Uh, he might be like, you know, you want this one, I got this one, depending on what we're doing. Even with counseling, he might be like, what you want to do? You want to talk, you want to and because we're kind of filling out the situation to see who needs to talk on this situation because I know him and I say, I think this would probably be better for you to speak on or you talk about it, I'll have, you know. These are important things. When you're about to go to battle, don't you need to know who's on your team? I believe it was uh, when I, you know, First Thessalonians 5 was talking about uh, know those that labor among you. And my mother used to say that, right? You got to know who, who's, who you're on the battlefield with, who you're fighting with, who you're standing beside. That way, when we do get on these lines and there's other people that come in, this is why things don't really go through because we never done anything together. Not even a study. Not even to sit down and listen to a lesson together. But now we are here trying to build a nation together with no king, right? So it ain't like, well, we got this directly from the king. It's like, no, well, we thinking this, but we think this. So think about if the spirit wasn't right on this line, there could have been an argument just on this discussion a minute ago with if, the, if there was an adverse spirit on this line, they could say, well, I'm tired of the lessons. And then some people say, well, I think we need the lessons. 
We just need to do it. No, we need to. But because the spirits was right, we understand where the perspectives. And we're going, oh, okay, I see where you're coming from. You're exactly right. And I see where you're coming from, where this is needed also, so that we can start to learn each other. And we need to start doing. So that way it's not just, you know what I'm saying? We, we do not, this is important. This is important. There's a certain kind of men that I believe that we're all trying to be on this line. What kind of men are we trying to be? I heard one person throw one thing out, but there's something else I'm looking for here, right? So somebody said, each Elohim or men of Elohim. Yes. Only reason I ain't going there first is because each Elohim, right, men of Elohim, when that is mentioned in the Tanakh, that's, that's like one of the highest levels that you can be as a man in the earth is Ish Elohim. So that title was only given to, I believe, three people, uh, Melech Dawid, I believe it was Yekezekiel, and it was one more person, I wanna say Moshe, but I could be wrong, but that, that title was only used to like three people in Tanakh. So I don't use that title much, but there's something else that we're trying to be as men, right? And does anybody know what that is on this line or have a thought of what they, you know, perceive that we're trying, what kind of men we're trying to be? Uh, as, as I, am. I remember this was one of the first lessons we really had, and it was Ishkael versus ah. men of honor. Ah, Ishkael, right? <laughs> Mighty men, right? But they say what? Capable men. Does everybody, everybody agree with that, right? Ish Kair, right? Because before you can be an Ish Elohim, right? You need to be a capable man. Would, you, would, would we all agree with that? Show yourself capable. Show yourself, you know, strong, able, able man, right? Uh, there's another word that I'm I'm looking for in that definition, but I, I, I it slipped my mind. But there's another way that word uh cool means or cool actually, but um it's slipping my mind. Oh, it means to connect the dots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like to connect the dots, connect things, right? So we talk about that each kail, right? And everybody knows where it talks about Isha Kaya. Where is it? Where we? Where do we know to go to find an Isha Kaya? Where, where, where we go to find out about that? What that entails? Anyone? Isha or a capable woman, a virtuous woman, right? Where do we go to find that out? Proverbs thirty-one. Proverbs 31, right? Is that what you want to say, Shalom? Hey, Maureen. What about you, Shy? You got your hand up? You going to say that, too? Okay, well, I was thinking about that, too, but I was also thinking about in Torah, you know, there are some virtuous women in there. You know, you just kind of have to read in between the lines. You have, you know. Absolutely, but we can read that. Okay, Shalikah. Yeah, you know, Sarah, you know, the other women in Torah, you know, I mean, right. I said directly, this is a virtuous woman, but you just you know read read the story. You can, you know, connect the dots. Are you? Okay, so okay, and I agree. But the clarity of it is Proverbs thirty one, right? We all we all kind of agree with that, right? So where where do you go to find the breakdown of the each time? What's the breakdown for that? So we all know the East Side Highway, but what about the East Highway? So you see, we quickly said Proverbs 31, right? But what about the East Highway? I believe it's Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, right? Well, is that a breakdown about the East Highway? What makes you think that that's the breakdown for the East Kyrie? I know Proverbs 18 talks about the name of God being a strong tower, the righteous running it. And I'll say, 
Very well done. I, uh, sorry, I don't hear you. I know you said something, but. Um, go ahead, Shy. I, I don't know if it was Rosario who went out or something. Go ahead, Shy. Ken, I would I would say, you know, um, the same kind of similar to my uh, other answer I just gave. Like, you know, you read the Torah, you can read about men such as Abraham and Moshe, mm -hmm. and you can kind of see how they conducted themselves and how what the Most High thought about their life and their actions. But if you go into the Brit Kata Shah, I would say, um, just you know, my thought, I would say maybe you know, first first Timothy uh chapter three is a good, I'll say is a good area because you know the, the first verse it says, uh this is a true saying, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good word. Then it goes down and talks about, you know, he must be blameless, you know, pay, patient, not covetous. It kind of talks about how, you know, a man that has a position of leadership is supposed mm -hmm. to conduct uh, okay. okay but there's got to be something that a substantial evidence before that go ahead Shalom Kane I was just thinking and looking over it real quick but I was actually thinking of Tehillim 119 Tehillim 119 but that, that entails yes that's a long chapter but that entails I would say everybody Right, but Proverbs, nothing y'all still haven't given me anything like Proverbs 31. You see what I'm saying, Akeem? Y'all are giving me good stuff, but you're not giving me anything like Proverbs. But when I said a capable woman, a virtuous woman, a Ish Isha Kaya, y'all like Proverbs 31. When I said each Kyle, I got Timothy, <laughs> I got uh, to, uh, Mission at 18, I got Cleveland 119, I got what's going on here? Go ahead, Adam, Azaria. Azaria, who we can't okay. hear. Okay, Adam. All right. Okay. Um, it was, I, I, I had the wrong one. But it was um, in Proverbs 20 where it talks uh -huh. about it. Um, uh -huh. it um, starting where it says, you know, righteous man leads a blameless life, blessed are his children after him. Um, mm -hmm. it, it breaks down like certain things that we're, you know, if I'm, how we're supposed to act as a man when we look at it, um, not being, you know, you know, being careful of how we drink, being careful how we offend people, being careful of being not sluggers. Um, the purpose of man's hearts are deep. You know, all these are different st stats of a man. Um, but also in 24, it said, man's steps are directed by Yahuwah. How then can anyone understand his own way? So Proverbs 20 really breaks down a lot of the, the, the steps of what it takes to be a, a, a virtuous man in a sense. Okay, fine, fine, fine. And I agree, a proverb does have a lot um, that it that it pours into being the Ishkai. So y'all ready for me to throw the monkey wrench in? <laughs> what about Proverbs 31? What about Proverbs 31? The same chapter you read about the Ishaq Kaila. Why would I be find out about each Kaila in there? Y'all want to read it? Let's, let's go, let's go there, because I have a reading. Can somebody get it? Uh, 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 31, uh, Proverbs 31. I'll read. I got it up. Okay. Um, it says, the words of Sovereign Lemuel, a messenger which his mother taught him. 
what my chosen and what chosen of my womb and what chosen of my vows. Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to wiping away sovereigns. Not mm-hmm. for sovereigns to dwell, not for sovereigns to drink wine, nor for princes to desire strong drink. Least they drink and forget what is inscribed and pervert the right of all the afflicted. Give strength. Mm-hmm. Um, give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those embedded in being. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his trouble no more. Open your mouth for the dumb in the cause of all the sons of the departed. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who does find a capable wife? For she is far, she is worth far more than rubies. The heart of her husband shall trust her, and she has no lack of gain. She shall do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She shall seek wool and flax, and with, and with delight she works with her hands. She shall be as the ships of Tarshish. She brings in her food from afar. She also rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and what is lawful for her girls. She shall consider a field and buy it from her prophets. She shall plant a vineyard. She shall gird herself with strength and strengthen her arms. She shall taste when her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out by night. She shall stretch out her hands to the the staff and her hand shall hold the spindle. She shall extend her hand to the poor, and she shall reach her, out her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, but for all her household is dressed in scarlet. She shall she shall make tapestry for herself. She is dressed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She shall make fine linen and sell them and shall give girdles for the merchants. Strength and splendor are her garments and she rejoices in time to come. She shall open her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the Torah a loving commitment. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children shall rise up and call her blessed, her husband too, and her praises her. And he praises her. Many daughters have done nobly, but you have risen over them all. Loveliness is deceptive and prettiness is vain. A woman who fears Yahuwah is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what what did I what did y'all get from that? Did I mean did did y'all see anything? Did I make a point there or did I Y'all don't get it. I mean, what do you think? Go ahead, Sha. Did I just blow that one? Sha, I can't hear you. Can't you hear me now? Can't. Right. Um, when you said uh. What about Mishalet or Proverbs chapter 31? I thought you were getting at the portion, you know, where um, it was talking about the king. Uh, I thought you would talk about that portion. And then mm-hmm. when I say, you know, it, 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 it does talk about how it match cares, but it's not that, you know, thorough. So then I thought about, um, you know, how we're supposed to be a wife to, you know, the most high. So, we had that. We have a few studies about that. You know, we're supposed to be a wife mm-hmm. to the most high. And I saw it from a different perspective, even though it says she, you know, she, she, her husband, you know, she, her children. You know, mm-hmm. I can still see it. It could be applied to, you know, um, a man of the striving for righteousness. Um, why you? Okay. Absolutely. Who else? Anybody else see anything in the breakdown? Sometimes we have to look at things from a different perspective to see how it relates to us. Because sometimes we look at it as relating to women or children, and it, it actually relates to us too. And not just from a that's my wife perspective. Anybody else say anything?
I got a question. Mm hmm Go ahead. It's just for, just for each one of us. So the brother that just spoke, I forget his, um, I didn't get his name because I didn't see who had just spoke. When he was breaking down, he said he didn't know. He looks at, he started reading it and he started thinking about the first part, which was a breakdown about being a king. But I was wondering how many of us, even if because it's breaking down for the requirements for a king, don't look at yourself as kings. Like, don't look at that. Like that that's not requiring to you because you're not a king. Mm -hmm. like that, how many of you all actually accept that as part of the scriptures as you, in the mind frame of you being a king? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question, though. Yeah, sometimes you're reading it and you're thinking about, oh, he's the king. This is what the king should do. So think about this. It says, um, it says, not for sovereigns to drink wine, right? Least they drink and forget the law. So it's not for sovereigns not to have a sound mind. Is that not for you? Right? And pervert the right of all the afflicted. Give strong to him who is perishing, strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those embittered in being. Right? Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his trouble no more. Open your mouth for the dumb. This is the king mentality. Right? And the cause of all the sons of the departed. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Then it starts talking about a capable wife. So a lot of times our mind just shifts and goes into, oh, this is the virtuous woman, right? <laughs> Go ahead, um, we go. You, you muted so, it though. Okay, so, so, um, so now that you bring this out, which, uh, when you said Proverbs 31, I, I started laughing because that's, um, that's more rape root for you. Um, <laughs> so, um, but then as you read it, and now as you, you're asking us to point something out, and now I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure out, um, where did she get all of this from? Boom! It's the questions you should be asking yourself. Go ahead, Adam. Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so I'm thinking about um, 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 Torah, and then I, I go back to Proverbs 31. When um, uh, when our forefather, uh, Abraham, got his promotion, Sarah mm. got her promotion. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and then you go back to the garden, you know, it said that this is, um, uh, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So I'm looking oh, at the aspect of the woman only um, giving off what her husband puts on her. Come on. So, so that's why. So that's why he's known in the gates, right? So when you're reading it, right, it's talking about her, talking about her, talking about her, and then all of a sudden it says, "Well," and then he's known in the gates when he oh. sits by the elders, and it's like, "Well, well, you're talking about the woman. Like, what does that have to do with him?" Well, because he. It's the image of him that's, <laughs> that's doing all the moving. So, I, I, yeah, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, to, to, to the, um, uh huh. To the, See, to the, to the, uh, yeah. Hallelujah. The wheels are spinning now, right? Where did she get it from? Where did she learn about being an Isha Kail? And she didn't get it from her Ish, which it gave you a hint right in the chapter. It says, He's in the gates with the elders. Now, we're going to read about that in just a second, right? It said that if she didn't get it from her Ish, she could have got it from her father. Listen to this, right? Who does find the Isha Kail, right? For she is worth more than Ruby. The heart of her husband shall trust her. He has no lack of gain. Right? She shall do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Right? 
That's what we supposed to be doing. She shall seek wool and flax. Don't we go out there and seek those things for our families at times? And with delight, she works with her hands. Aren't we supposed to be out there working with our hands for our family? Not bitterly, but happy to do it. I have, I'm happy to, to bring substance in for my family. I am. Right? She shall be as a ship of Tarshish. She brings her food from afar. Don't we go from afar and go get food? If it ain't no food, we're going to hunt. We're going to go get some food. Right? Real men. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and a portion for her girls. Don't we get up at night? Matter of fact, God, we talked about something that each a man of y'all does in the night. We say praise in the midnight, in the early hours, before the sun. Right? So she's rising before it's morning. Sometimes we need to be rising. We need to be up before the sun. I'm up before the sun comes up almost every day. Before the sun's up, right? She shall consider a field and buy it. You consider land and go get it. Men, from her profit, she shall plant a vineyard. What does it say in Jeremiah 29 that a man should do? Build houses and plant vineyards. Then get a wife. Take wives. Right? She shall gird herself with strength and strengthen her arms. Men, she shall taste when her gain is good. Right? You should be doing that. Her lamp does not go out by night. Same should be for you. She shall stretch out her hands to the distaff. Right? I believe the distaff deals with those in need of a of that nature. I have to look that word up just to verify it. Somebody knows, say it. Right? And she'll extend her hand to the poor and she'll reach out her hands to the needy. Are we supposed to be doing that? Men? She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household is dressed in scarlet. Right? She shall make tapestry for herself. Did not cold make coats. She is dressed in fine linen and purple, the priest. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits with the elders of the land. Boom. Boom. Her ish is known in the gates. So let's go to the book of Eo, chapter 29. Okay? Let's go to Yo, which should be the next book over in my text. It's the next, this is the next book after Proverbs. I don't know what it is in everybody else's book. Job, or Yo, chapter 29. And can you read that, Adon? Y'all still with me? Got kind of quiet. Can't hear me. And you said, Eo, what was the chapter again? 29. Okay, so this staff is like a stick or a spindle. It's like a, it's like a uh, I'm going to call it a uh, sewing machine, <laughs> pretty much. We know that men were making clothes because... We know we built the temple. We built the garments for the priest. We made we made clothes. <laughs> we know how to make garments. She does the same thing. Yeah, stop the first one though. Okay. Eo, come. We know that Job chapter twenty nine, starting at verse one. Mm -hmm. And Job again took up his discourse and said. Oh, that I were as in in months past, as in the days when Elo, uh, Elo, oh, oh, Eloi protected me, when his lamp shone on my head, when I walked in the dark by his light, as I was in the days of my autumn. You, when hold they, on, say that again. Say that again, real clear. When as I, I was, what? 
as I was in the days of my autumn, when the intimacy of Elohai was on my tent. Or do you want to go back to verse three? Three, three, read three. I want y'all to highlight it or memorize it one. That's a very important thing right there. When his lamp shone on my head, when I walked in the dark by his light. When he walked in the dark by his light, Yah's light. So he said, I walked in the dark by your light. Remember that. It may be darkness all around us, but we walk in the dark by Yah's light. All right, let's keep going. I need a half Remember the lamp, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Why? Because there's darkness all around us, always. As I was in the days of my autumn, when the intimacy of Elohai was on my tent, when the Almighty was still with me, when my children were around me, when my steps were bathed with cream and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me, when I went out to the gate by the city to take my seat in the open square, oh. the young men... Did y'all see anything? Mm. Okay. Um, Anybody see anything? Don't answer, Adaya. I know you see it. Anybody see anything there? I know somebody else sees it. Go ahead, Sha. Give it to him. Can you, uh, I'm coming from the KJV version. Um, verse seven says, when I was out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, and we were just talking about the gate. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Proverbs uh, 31, yeah. Right. <laughs> so it says that her husband was in the gate with the elders. Right? And the yoke said, I took my seat in the gate, <laughs> right? And, a broad, and, and my seat in the broad place or in the open square, pretty much, right? I went forth to the gate and to the city in the open square, in the open place where the judgment took place at. But that's where the Ishaq Kail's husband was at. All right, let's keep going. Verse eight, the young men saw me and hid, and the age and the age rose up, they stood. Okay, Rumors so the age, the age stood, right? Where was the, the, the husband of the Ishaq Kail said he was amongst the elders in the gates of the city. But the elders were here, the age were there, they rose before him. It didn't say that Eo was an elder, but it just said that the age rose before him. Let's keep going. Verse nine, rulers held back their words and laid a hand on their mouth. The voice of leaders was hushed and their tongue clung to the roof of their mouth. Mm -hmm. For when the ear heard, it blessed me. And when the eye saw, it gave witness of me. Mm. Because I... Slowly. So what did the Isha Kahil, it said that her children called her what? Blessed. Blessed. Why? Because she's not in the gates of the city. She's in the gates of her home. You see the difference? The old, the Ish Kail's in the gates of the city. The Isha's in the gates of the home. So her husband and her children call him ble her blessed. And in the gates of the city, the people should be calling you blessed. 
This is how you start learning about the Ish Kail. It's said a lot, but not taught a lot and talked about a lot. Let's keep going. Verse 12, because I rescued the poor who cried out and the fatherless who had no helper. That sounds like when it talks about the king at the beginning, remember? And what did it say the king was doing? He was a mouth to the dumb, right? He was supposed to be, I'm paraphrasing, but helping the poor, right? Keep going. 13, the blessing of the perishing one would come upon me, and I made the widow's heart sing for joy. I mm. put on. So the ones who were dying were blessing him, and he made the widow's heart come to joy. So watch, my Isha Kail is at the home having us enjoy. I'm out here having the people enjoy. Keep going. 14, I put on righteousness and it robbed me. Right ruling was my cloak and turban. But uh -huh. it robed me. Right ruling was my cloak and turban. I was eyes to the blind and I was feet to the lame. Ah, I was eyes to the blind, feet to the lame, right? And Quahelet, or I mean, excuse me, Michelin said, I was a mouth to the dumb, right? Okay. <laughs> Keep going. I was a father to the poor, Ooh. and I investigated the case which I did not know. He investigated the case that he didn't know. I was a detective. I'm going to figure it out. I don't know what's going on with this, but I'm going to, I'm not going to speak on it. I'm going to investigate. You see the difference? I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to spread rumors. I'm going to investigate. You see the difference between the Ish Kail? Keep going. Hey, your baby is here. Verse 17. And I broke the jaws of the perverse and snatched the prey from his teeth. I broke the jaws of the perverse. Are you breaking the jaws of the perverse? Then I snatched the prey from their mouth. This is probably one of the most powerful things in the, in the whole Tanakh that I've read. Because it actually shows us, one, what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah that got them destroyed. Two, it shows us what an Ish Kail looks like. Keep going. Okay. Verse nine, eight, verse 18. Then I thought I would die in my nest and increase my days as the sand, my root reaching out to the waters and do lie all night on my branch. My esteem fresh within me and my bow renewed in my hand. To me, they listened and they waited and kept silence at my counsel. Mm. After after my words, they did not speak again, and my speech settled on them. And they waited for me like the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. Mm. I smiled at those who did not believe, and the light of my face they and the light of my face they did not dim. Mm. I chose way for them. They didn't affect me. Those who didn't believe in me, they didn't affect me. You hear that? I, he said, he said, I smiled at those who did not believe and the light of my face did not dim. That's powerful what the yoga is telling us. I chose, verse 25, I chose the way for them and sat as chief and I dwelt like a sovereign in the army, like one who comforts mourners. So let me go back to what uh, Zokane, uh, uh, More, uh, Hannah, y'all said, right? He said, y'all not looking at yourself like a king, right? It's because you're not acting like a true king. He said, Eob said, I chose the way for them and said it's chief. And I dwelt like a sovereign in the army a king in the army, like one who comforts mourners. 
Y'all getting this? So when you want to know what an Ishkael looks like, we talk about Ishakael all the time, right? And then you talk about the man who does this, you know, blesses the man who walked not in the council of the ungodly, it says, you know, sitteth in the uh, seat of stone. You know, we do that. That's told. But nowhere do we have like a, a complete breakdown of what this looks in comparison to Proverbs 31. But Proverbs 31 itself tells us what an Ishkael looks like by telling us what an Ishkael looks like. And it describes her Ishkael husband. It says he's in the gate with the elders because he's an Ishkael. Listen to me. So how what, what could we say in reference to an Ishkael versus an uh, in comparison to an each type. Has anybody got any thoughts on that? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much about done. So, go ahead, Shai. Yeah, so, based on, you know, what we just read, I come to the conclusion that um, it's the same. You know, for it's the it's, it's the same. Um, you know, of course, you know this. You know, for a man or woman, there's you know physical difference, but as far as the duties, it's the same. They just apply them in a different area. You know, mm -hmm. they apply them in different areas, but the work, you know, the the labor should be the same. Are you? Right. Man, are you? And as I'm reading. Like all these different laws are coming to my mind as I'm reading. You know, don't be a stumbling block for the right. block. Come on. So, <laughs> you know, I am just reading them like all these different laws. And it's like when you walk in Torah, right? You, mm -hmm. it, Torah is what allows you to walk virtuously. So when a man is walking in Torah and he's leading his house, so the benefits are going to be seen inside and outside the house mm -hmm. because the Torah has not just been an outward thing, but it's all also it's an internal thing. So that way his house reflects the same thing. So oh, his yeah. being um, exalted in a sense um, in the house because the kids are calling her blessed. You know, the, her house is in order that way. Her husband's out and about, but the husband also is being blessed because oh. when I'm looking at Eob, they said that the young man hid. Mm. Mm. Come on. That means they like they only hide when they're doing something wrong. Mm. So, hey, come on. But That's like it. he investigated, he didn't he didn't judge a matter without first first looking at all the witnesses he didn't just say oh well this person's poor this is no he said even though he was a mouth for the poor and all these other things he did his due diligence to make uh, sure that he did things upright that he was just that he was balanced so uh uh each uh, has to be balanced and his isha has to be balanced and it goes back to what um mori that was talking about when he talked about adam when the man and the woman becoming one flesh they became complete. They became one. They became God. So, yeah. <laughs> you might as well finish the lesson, though. Uh, Zokay, uh, Malkiyahu, then I got you, uh, Zokay, uh, 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 honey. Uh. Shalom, brothers. How are y'all doing today? Hey, it's good, okay. it's good to see all of y'all out today, especially Hanaka. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a, in a good little while. Um, but all of this, all of this, the brother hit the nail on the head. It's, it's basically Torah. Um, when we read scriptures, and we're getting tired of listening to the same things over and over again, because we're just reading on the surface. Uh, the Torah gives us the law. So not tells us where we went wrong. Uh, when you get to books like Job, Job is an example of who walked Torah and how he walked Torah. And he didn't stand there and argue with everybody about what Torah said. He, let you, he said what he said and went on about his business if you didn't believe him. 
uh, the book of Samuel is a good example of how we messed up and where we went wrong at. When they said, we don't want to, we don't, we don't want your kingdom no more, Yah. Yah said, I'm mad with you. I'm gonna give you this king, but I'm mad with you. And in the whole book, you got Israel killing Israel because Yah is mad with us. And he's still mad with us. Now there's gonna come a time when Yah gonna, gonna, gonna let it all go and, and, and bring us all back to fact. But, but we gotta learn something about ourselves first. See, we're reading stuff on the surface, but we're not going beneath the surface and find out what the real problem is. The real problem is Yah is mad with us. We're not walking Torah. We're walking as people come, as other people teach us what Torah is and not what he said Torah is. And that's two very different things. Are we trying to live according to what other people say Torah is? See, he gave a specific what Torah is and you could research it and do it yourself and learn Torah for yourself and not accept the way the world teach you. He tells you certain things and you gotta be obedient to him and not the world. That's what he says. That's what Yahushua said. I was talking about my Isha about this earlier. He's on Solomon porch. All these Yehudins came up to him. Yeah. I did. I'm sorry, huh? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you, Don. Okay. All these Yehudins came up to him and said, show us this sign. And he said, you're not my, you're not my people, no ways. Uh, you're not in my hand. And those that my father have in my hands will not be taken from me. So he's telling us that there's a lot of us that's going to claim to be that's not and teaching all the wrong things. So we got to learn the right way on our own and through the, and through Torah. And as far as our brothers, yes, we got to come together, but we got to come together as Yah commanded us, not as the world commands us. That's why we don't, that's why we fail in everything we do. Because we're doing it with a mixture of this world and not with Yah. You see, once we get past that mixture and we get with Yah, then everything we touch turn to gold. Then we can overcome. But until then, we're going to struggle. And yo, in this each Kail thing you're preaching today, all this is a man that's walking Torah as Yah commands it. There you go. There you go. And a sister who's walking Torah, as y'all commands it, following her each. Hey. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 31. Uh, bring it, uh, 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 Murray, uh, Henry, y'all, uh, then I got you, uh, so, uh yo, sorry, for yo, sorry. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm. I wanted to say that it is, I have to, before the octave is spoken, the other octave spoke, and um, I want to add to, you know, his idea. And then these things that we are learning is like perspective. And that was my whole point. And so of asking the question, I could really say that we weren't looking at ourselves. I wanted to be clear and say that our question was when you read it or when you read these things, what perspective were you looking for? That was I was trying to actually provoke, which it did provoke that thought because I actually came and started looking at it different, but that's why I said exactly. And I knew the point that I thought that you were trying to make as well. So I just wanted to keep that perspective in in that when we read and, and learning like the very first thing that is said in chapter 29 when I don't know what version but I know everyone is familiar with their um with their Ibrit but in Ibrit the very first verse says this is a Mashal you know, this is a proverb. Uh -huh. thing. See what I'm saying? So uh -huh. just that part out just so everybody can see, understand, and knowing this story, this was a pretty much a testimony against the men that were standing next to him that had been accusing him, as we already know. But it's still a proverb for us to see, you know, and added to that. But I wanted us to that it first says it is a proverb so that we can really grasp what we're 
trying to grasp from this proverb. You know, the proverbs have to be Torah based. They are always Torah based lessons. So it does always stem from Torah. I want to say that as well. But sticking to the point of what you brought up about this lesson, I wanted to, just to add that to what the brother said and point out that part about verse one. I don't. Absolutely. Very important thing. And a proverb or Michelle, right? Uh, uh, Lo, right? Uh, it's, it's something that is the Michelle, right? Michelle to govern. And these are things that should govern your mind. So when he says that, the, your thoughts should be, this should be governing governing your mind. That's why we read the Mishalim, right? The Proverbs. These are thoughts that should govern your mind. Fear of God, the beginning of wisdom. You said things of that nature. These, these, are, these should govern your mind, right? Stories or sayings that should govern your mind. Um, go ahead, um, sorry, Yosef. Can, can, can you hear me pretty well? Absolutely. Mm, I got goosebumps. I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> 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 because, be, only because it's like, man, I don't, I don't know how to uh, add on to the brothers. They already said everything that's on my ruach, and that's how I know that this is true. I'm going to use that word, right? So I only, so only got two scriptures to kind of support my claim here. So I'm going to go to um, Shemot chapter 18, and I'm going to go to Dabarim real quick. So Shemot chapter 18, verse 21, and it says, But you yourself seek out for all the men of the people, able men who fear Elohim, men of truth, hate unfair gain, and place them over mm -hmm. rulers of thousands, rulers mm -hmm. of hundreds, and rulers of tens, and rulers of, rulers of fifties, rulers of tens. So... Before I go to Debarim, I'll say for me, right, when, when the question was posed about able men, like if there's any scripture that kind of describes it, for me, this would be that scripture of an able man. And these three factors would be the baseline, I would say, of an mm -hmm. able man. So let me go to Debarim real quick. Debarim 13. Right, absolutely. <laughs> so Debarim, so this is something that immediately pricked my spirit. Because when Eob was in the land, he was diligently seeking for the truth. This is kind of going with the um, the um, Torah portion of Shofat. And I was like, hmm, this is the enactment of a judge. So Deborah chapter 13, 14, then it says, then you shall inquire. Well, backtrack. Let me go to 12, because I know more is going to like this. <laughs> uh, 13, 12. When you hear someone in one of your cities, which Yahuwah, your Elohim, gives you, to dwell in, saying, some of those, some men, <laughs> sons of Belial, have <laughs> gone out of the midst, <laughs> have gone out of your midst and led the inhabitants of the city astray, saying, let us go and serve other mighty ones, mighty ones whom you have not known. Then you shall inquire, search out, ask diligently, and see if the matter is true and establish that this abomination was done in your midst. My favorite part. Verse 15, and you shall certainly strike the inhabitants of the city with the edge of the sword and put it under the ban and all that is in it and its livestock with the edge of the sword. So this individual, this Ish Kayel, mm -hmm. he is one that is diligently seeking truth, which we already know that truth is Elohim. He's diligently seeking Elohim 24 seven. He has Elohim on his mind, mm -hmm. which the Zalkane already brought out. <laughs> So you should always have this fixated on your mind. And with that, with that already on your heart 24 seven, it trickles into your family. Henceforth, your Isha is gonna reciprocate that same exact thing. If she is to be your rib, if she is to be your, your helpmate, she's gonna be your mirror. Everything that you're doing and outputting, she's gonna reciprocate that in your house. Everything that you do. She's, uh, <laughs> I said this, to, um, I forgot who I said this to, I forget but she's the uh, incubator for you. I heard that from a, um, from a, doc, uh, a video I was watching, a Dr. Monroe. She's the incubator. Everything that you put into her, she's gonna reciprocate that tenfold, depending on your rib. So you wanna, one, make sure that you got the right rib to do that <clears throat> and make sure that whatever you're putting into, the, into your rib is told, it is of Elohim. 
that's why y'all are so that's why y'all are so able to look alike. But I actually had one more thought. You had said something interesting about the spin needle, right? The needle on a thread, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I sew, um, not like professionally, but I do sew. But I wanted to say this right about the sewing. That aspect of sewing is very, very detailed oriented, right? If you're a person that sews and that's like your profession, I would easily say that you have to be very, very diligent in order to, to actually sew. And when you're sewing, you have to get deep down and personal with it. Your face is literally right then and there to make sure that you don't make any type of mistakes. So I thought that was very interesting how that aspect of mm -hmm. sewing is also incorporated with the Isha Kayel and how detail oriented she has to be for whatever she's putting out to be flawless. But I, I blame my plane right there. <laughs> oh man, all good points. Uh, I think y'all get the point, you know, more than the point, you know. Just remember there is no Isha Kayel without Ish Kayel. You understand? We set the stuff, we we set the standard and the tone. And we have to be on Kayel, right? Men and capable men to produce capable women. You know, a lot of times daughters look at their fathers and they take a lot from their mothers, of course, but they also take a lot from their fathers and what they see him doing, how he treats them, how he gets out, you know what I'm saying? And this is, this is very uh, uh, important that we would understand that most High charged us, he said, but man shall rule you. So he said, you should govern her. But that govern is not just in the aspect of, yeah, go, go, go wash the clothes. That's, that's not. The govern is to lead her along the way. Show her how it's done. You know what I'm saying? Help her adapt, because they're the most adaptable of all creation is the woman, right? Show her. Be ish, be that ish kail. And then maybe you'll attract an Isha Kayu. You ever thought about that? For those who are trying to attract an Isha Kayu, maybe you'll be an Ish Kayu, or maybe you'll attract an Isha Kayu. Um, so, with that being said, go ahead, uh, Mori Dawu. I'm sorry, I just wanted to add in uh, possibly for, for those who are, I mean, of course, nobody on this line, but for those who are married, the reason <laughs> the reason why your wife isn't what you want her to be is because you're not who you're supposed to be. So you're still receiving what you give. You will attract what you are. That's why Adam once again said, she is my bone and my bone and flesh. My, she is me. So you can't get mad at her, just like the Most High said that the women are committing fornication, they're committing adultery, but I'm not going to blame them. I'm going to blame you because you're committing fornication and committing adultery. So how can I deal with the woman without dealing first with the image, not the shadow? Correct. Absolutely. So it's just uh, something to think about. Hopefully that helped uh, somebody tonight, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know... <laughs> Behold, I set before you today, life and good or death and evil. Therefore, I command you this day, choose life so that both you and your seed may live. You know, so blessed be Yahweh, blessed be the name of Yahweh, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end. Um, if any more, I see more if talk is on the line, Shalom, Adon, uh, to you. Um, if any of the Maureen or elders want to have any final uh, comments, uh, please, at this time, definitely go ahead or any, uh, definitely open up for you first. Uh, any Maureen or elders? Okay. I don't see anybody uh, jumping in. Uh, any other brother or anyone uh, have anything to, any comment, uh, the final comment that they want to say? Oh, go ahead, uh, Zayu. And then Shai. Um, Tobe lesson. Um, 
and and, and it's like a, a renewal coming fresh from Sukkot, getting us back on that track and, and taking action because we we know these lessons are supposed to promote change, but if we're not going to heed to them, then it's going to be pointless. But we know that we have to take action. If, if we're expecting something to change in our lives, we have to first uh, listen to what's being spoken um, in the physical and in the spiritual. That way, it we may um, reflect it into our own lives and add it to our, our artillery um, so we can make the change. So it's a dope lesson. Um, I really appreciate it. And it gave me more insight on, you know, what it takes to be that each Kael, you know, so we can evolve into each Elohim. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Todayah. Todayah. Sha. Okay, and uh, to blessing. Um, another thing I was thinking about, I think Azari and another, another brother already brought it out. Um, but when I was, when we were reading uh, Job uh, 29, I was just thinking about why we're caught over Leviticus 20, uh, no, not 20, but 19. Because it seems like, you know, a lot of that was just, uh, you mm -hmm. know, right, right from the Torah, because it talks about, you know, the judgment, mm -hmm. the blind, and also talks about, you know, rising up, those who are older, and also talks about, uh, you know, just, yeah, just, uh, yeah, so many things in uh, 19, I mean, yeah, Leviticus 19 was in Job uh, 29. I just find that, you know, extremely interesting. Uh, and, um, I, yeah, I benefited from the lesson. Oh, it also talked about helping out the poor. That's that's about it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I benefited from the lesson. You know, um, I guess I feel like I matured. And uh, one thing I also was thinking about, you know, uh, I believe it was in Tehillim. I think it's Tehillim 119, where it talks about, I believe it was Mel Mel He said, I understand more than my teachers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing where I think about, you know, what I sit in the studies. I'll say, if this brother can reach this amount of understanding, I can reach that understanding already, you know? Come on. Like, give that's our praise right. to the Most High. Okay, brother. Okay, we got? Give our praise to the Most High for the study, and I hope, you know, we all could take the portion, you know, that would help us out in our personal lives, and I yield. I praise the God. Okay, okay. Brothers, I'm going to tell you all this, man. We started off right. I want to definitely end right. Um, anybody else got anything to say before I close out? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Um, but, you know, this is a safe place. And if we're really going to call ourselves brothers in a brother study, we should be able to have conversation. We should be able to talk. We should be able to get to know each other. We should be able to have differing opinions and come to some conclusions or figure it out. Um, so this is this is a safe place for you. If you're dealing with something, this is a safe place. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it from a scripture perspective. Let's talk about it from a brother's perspective. You know, uh, we got to have this because so many brothers really need this, but they're not getting it. So they out here trying to handle it on their own, failing, you know, um, in some instances or going through things that may not be necessary for them to completely go through. Or if you do got to go through it, you don't necessarily have to go through it alone. So these are things, man, I just want us all to remember. This is, this is, this is, this is what actually turns into a physical community. A mind community, a mental community can turn into a physical community. But when you try to do it the other way around to make a physical community, a mental community, that's where you that's where you run into a lot of problems. But let's put our minds together. Let's start uniting in mind, getting to know each other and stop battling all the time on doctrines. And this is what I heard. Let's figure it out. I do believe that with the right spirit, we can go through these scriptures and what we don't see in there, y'all can reveal it to us because he's sovereign. So let's all remember that this is a safe place, brothers. This is our safe place. Okay, we're not gonna let nobody come in here and try to, you know what I'm saying, change that. It's not a safe place to come, learn together, study together, grow together. So when we do see each other in person, it's real and ain't a bunch of faking. Right? I think that everybody on this line that I know on this line pretty much is, is down with that. So uh, all praise to the most high. Go ahead, Tefila. Uh, 
us to be out of here. Hallelujah. Blessed to you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King everlasting, to the Elohim of Abraham, Yisrael, and Yisrael. Just giving you thanks on this night, O Elohim. Thank you first for forgiving us, forgiving our trespasses. For it says, blessed is the man whose uh, sins are forgiven, whose transgressions are covered. I thank you for just being faithful to this generation, from generation to generation, but definitely to this generation. For fulfilling your promises and uh, for giving us your words, teaching us your word, allowing us to come and return back unto you. I thank you for each and every brother on this line. Abba, I ask you to just touch each and every brother in a mighty way. Teach us your Torah. Reveal to us the, the things that we don't quite understand, Father Yah. So that not that we may get glory and praise for our names or praise unto your most kadesh name, so that we may. Uh, 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 do the commands to do them right, to do them properly with the right heart, not just uh, 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 as a tradition or a vain tradition or a custom, but with a pure heart toward, toward you, Father God, that we may once again ascend on that holy mountain. I ask you to bless each and every brother on this line, bless their household, bless those who are keeping the commands, those who are coming to you, bless those who don't know you, Father Yah, but they have a heart to do right, but they just don't know who, they don't know who you are. I ask you to reveal yourself to them, Father Yah, bring them to you in a mighty way. Give us wisdom as leaders. Give us wisdom as men of Yisrael. For we know that if we lack wisdom, we are to ask of you, and you give it to men liberally, Father. I thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. I just pray that you keep us in your hands and under your wings. And as your as your as the song says, Yahweh Yishmareka Mikora, Yishma et Nefeshka, Yahweh Yishma Zeteka Ubo Eka Me Atame Odolam. For Yah will keep you from all evil. He will keep your soul. He will, he will guard your going out and your coming in from now, even forevermore. Blessed be Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, my brothers. Good meeting with y'all tonight. Hallelujah. Till the next time. <laughs>